In the previous episode, Yen Yu's dad, Thunder God, protected Yang and his teammates from Xiao Ao's pursuit and led them to his base. Once they arrived, Yang approached a Scarlet Rose member and requested their traitor's use. However, the man responded that he couldn't provide such information. Undeterred, Yang proposed a deal. He offered to forge enough weapons for all the base members if they could supply him with the necessary materials. The man was amazed Yang could create a tier 1 weapon with minimal resources and agreed to his offer. He then escorted Yang to the recently arrived trader, instructing him to make full use of it in exchange for fulfilling his promise. Yang entered the trader's domain and discovered the new section of the Red Robe Trader's Field Challenge. This was something he had always wanted to try. Paying an entry fee of 1,800 gray crystals, he stepped into the battlefield, covered in an icy field, wondering what awaited him this time. To his surprise, a tall, colossal tier 3 spear knight and a tier 2 sword knight emerged before him. This field challenge called for an all-out group battle. Summoning his sword, Yang engaged the soldiers head-on, effortlessly defeating them with his exceptional skills. Besides their sheer numbers, these soldiers had no other advantages and were too weak. Their defeat only served to help him accumulate experience points, further enhancing his forging abilities, which were about to evolve to the third level. Yang urged them to stop wasting time and attack him immediately, swiftly dispatching every last one of them, leaving him breathless. Having defeated everyone, Yang believed that the field challenge was over and expected to be forced out at any moment. However, when he tried to use his ring, he realized that he was not being expelled. This revelation meant that the challenge was far from over, it had only just begun. As Yang turned around, he saw a soldier riding a horse, the main boss of this challenge. The previous soldiers he faced were mere warm-ups, compared to this formidable opponent. Something felt off about the boss, as it emanated similar dark energy to the dark seeds that caused the apocalypse. This dark seed boss was a tier 4 monster wielding a menacing sword. Even Xiao Ao, in his previous life, wasn't as powerful as this. Realizing he couldn't evade the attack, Yang made a split-second decision to block it, knowing that his life depended on it. However, the force of the monster's strike sent him flying backward, crashing hard onto the ground. He barely managed to withstand the tremendous blow. The monster's astonishing speed and determination to end the fight were overwhelming, but Yang deftly dodged its assaults. Yang strategized to dodge toward his unarmed side, allowing him an opening to counterattack. However, to his surprise, the Dark Seed monster conjured a spear in its other hand. With a sword in one hand and a lightning spear in the other, it advanced upon Yang with a terrifyingly swift and deadly move. Yang braced himself and took a direct hit from the lightning spear, shocking the monster and avoiding a fatal blow. His golden silk armor proved inadequate against such an attack. Despite this, Yang thanked the beast for rekindling the thrilling sensation he hadn't experienced since his rebirth. Preparing to strike the final blow, the monster swung its sword at Yang, who narrowly evaded it. This battle posed an immense challenge for Yang, with his chances of survival seeming slim. However, as the monster was infused with dark seeds, Yang recalled the purifying water he possessed and hoped it could affect the creature. Breaking free from their close quarters combat, Yang created some distance and threw the purifying water at the monster. Still, the cunning creature deflected the water bottle with its broken spear. Yang realized that the monster feared the purifying water, instilling him with newfound confidence. Seizing a Duordi opportunity, he revealed his last purifying water bottle. He deliberately took a sword attack to his chest. At that moment, he hurled the purifying water bottle at the monster's face. The purifying water worked its magic, finally ending the monster's existence. Yang pondered the connection between the challenging field and the impending apocalypse, suspecting that a person of immense power might be behind it all. Though he had emerged victorious, he couldn't help but feel shocked and amused when he discovered that killing the boss had advanced his forging skill to level 4. In one day on the battlefield, his forging skill had progressed from level 2 to level 4. Furthermore, the evolution potion he received upgraded his tier from level 2 to level 3. As a final reward from the field challenge, he obtained the Master of Ice, the second stage of the forging skill. Finally, Yang redeemed a level 2 healing potion to recover from the damage inflicted by the boss. He also made a few more trade options, eventually acquiring the level 3 evolution potion. However, since he currently possessed only one red crystal and the potion cost 40, he decided to receive it another time once he had collected enough red crystals. With that, the trade came to an end. Upon his return, Yang was congratulated on his promotion to level 3. 
he approached the man and requested that the remaining two chances of the challenge field be reserved for him. The man assured him that anything would be possible as long as he fulfilled his end of the deal. Yang agreed to the offer but had two conditions. First, they would provide all the materials required for forging the weapons. Second, he needed 100 red crystals. The man agreed, stating that acquiring the red crystals and materials would be fine for them, as they had been collecting different materials in the hope of one day meeting someone like Yang with extraordinary forging abilities. Curious about Yang's skills, the man asked if he could craft a tier 2 weapon repeatedly without errors. In response, Yang decided to demonstrate his forging prowess. He crafted a tier 2 submachine gun with special effects, proving that he could forge a weapon of any grade with his level 4 forging skill as long as he had enough materials. Impressed, the man confirmed the weapon's tier and special effects and handed over 50 red crystals as a down payment. The remaining 50 red crystals would be given once the equipment was ready. With the crystals in hand, Yang set out to trade again to purchase the level 3 evolution potion. The Scarlet Rose men were also pleased with the Tier 2 weapons, as they would provide a significant advantage in dealing with the Skywheel organization. Yang asked to be taken to the place where the materials were stored. The men led him to their warehouse, where they kept most of Tier 3 mutant materials, including the Horn of Tier for mutant Steelhorn Rhinoceros, for which they had paid a great price to acquire. Yang requested to be left alone and that no one enters the forging area while he worked on the weapons. The men complied, and Yang began forging Tier 2 machine guns for the entire base. After crafting numerous Tier 2 weapons, he decided it was time to upgrade his own equipment. He considered equipping his sword with the Tier 4 rhinoceros horn but stopped, realizing it could potentially waste its special properties. Instead, he tried using the Tier 4 horn on his clothes. He successfully upgraded his shirt with the Tier 4 rhinoceros horn and gained an auto-healing effect and an attack boost. Continuing his forging work, Yang completed the weapons. The man was shocked and amazed at his accomplishment. He offered him the remaining 50 red crystals and a few tier 2 evolution potions, as promised. Yang distributed the evolution potions to his teammates to help enhance their physical abilities. He had also prepared low-level storage bags for everyone to conveniently store their belongings. In addition to the weapons, Yang had also crafted a tier 3 self-operating drone, specifically for Yen Yu, the mechanic. To Qing Xue, he presented a tier 3 light feather blade capable of penetrating even tier 4 armor. Duan Muyi received a pair of tier 3 thunder boots that generated powerful kicks accompanied by bursts of thunder. Finally, Qin Yu received a tier 2 wind control clock that aided in controlling the airflow, enhancing her rosemary abilities. With everything in place, Yang and his teammates were well equipped and ready to face the challenges ahead. After the meeting concluded, Yang instructed Xiao Wan and Chen Yu to pick up Xinan and Xu Xiaoyun. Xing Xiuwa approached Yang, curious about the important task he had for her. He requested that she drink the evolution potion first, as she had now reached Tier 3. Xing Xiuwa complied and asked what her task was. Yang's response was simple yet profound, her job was to survive, no matter the challenges ahead in the future. As the night passed and the sun began to rise, the base suddenly started to shake. Miao Chuan wondered if it was an earthquake, but Yang suspected that someone might be attacking the base. A member of the Scarlet Rose informed everyone to prepare for a fight as the Skywheel organization had arrived. Outside the base, Zheng Erliai, a peak tier 3 evolver skilled in bullet building, approached in a vehicle accompanied by Lu Toning, a tier 4 evolver, and Zhu Deli, a peak tier 3 evolver specializing in poison. They challenged anyone who dared to stop them from eliminating the Scarlet Rose that day. Thunder God confronted them, demanding to know who they were and why they were causing trouble. Lu Tony informed them that their boss had given them a final chance to join the Skywheel organization. The request was to either join them or die there. Unfazed, Thunder God activated his lightning power, mocking their strength and proclaiming they were not strong enough to take his life. His men cautioned him to be careful, as their opponents seemed formidable. Thunder God prepared to show the people from the Skywheel organization that the Scarlet Rose could not be easily bullied. However, the black-haired man from the enemy group attempted to deal with Thunder God by throwing several bombs, causing a chain explosion in front of him. Thunder God's men called out to him, but Yang reassured them that Thunder God was unharmed. To their surprise, Thunder God emerged in front of the black-haired man. The man cried out for help, and Lu Tony intervened, stating that no one could harm him as long as she was there to protect him with her hair. Unfortunately for her, no one could shield her from Thunder God's direct hit, leaving both of her men shocked. 
As everyone started fleeing from the overwhelming power of Thunder God, he was surprised when his thunderous fist was blocked by Lu Tony's strong defense, created by her hair that had multiplied several times, covering the entire vehicle. Lu Tony taunted him, boasting that this was the strength of the strongest man in the Scarlet Rose base. She offered Thunder God a proposition, if he agreed to join their team, her lord would provide him with a fourth-grade evolutionary agent, allowing him to become as strong as her. Thunder God rejected her offer, declaring he would never be someone else's hound. Despite Uncle Lu's attempts to stop him, he charged forward to attack the black-haired man. However, Lu Tony used her hair to tightly grip Thunder God, preventing him from escaping. The black-haired man arrogantly taunted Thunder God, threatening to kill all his comrades and leave him isolated. He threw a grenade toward Uncle Lu but used his ability to swallow and nullify each grenade thrown. Yang urgently instructed him to spit them out quickly, but before he could do so, the black-haired man seized the opportunity to detonate a grenade inside Uncle Lu's stomach. Xingxue rushed to save the unconscious Uncle Lu lying on the ground, but Yang held her back, explaining that Uncle Lu had been injured because his power level was lower, and she was no different from him. Xingxue tried to argue that they needed to save him and teleported herself to shield Uncle Lu. However, the black-haired man wouldn't allow her to protect him and threw a grenade in her direction. Realizing she couldn't always rely on her brother to handle every situation, Xingxue drew her tier 3 sword and swiftly sliced through the grenade, grabbing Uncle Lu and teleporting them to safety. The black-haired man was intrigued by the knife she wielded and contemplated taking it for him. As Xingxue believed they had escaped from the black-haired man, she was startled to see him throwing several more grenades toward them. The grenades were about to land before them, so Xingxue quickly covered Uncle Lu to shield him from the impact. However, a gunshot suddenly rang out from the doorway, hitting the grenades in midair and causing them to explode. Yan and Duan Mui had arrived to protect them. Yang commented that they seemed to have successfully completed the challenge from the traitor and had grown stronger. Undeterred, the black-haired man continued to throw more grenades at them, challenging them to block his counterattack. You used her gun and automated drone to shoot at the grenades, but a few managed to evade her attacks and were still descending toward them. You revealed that she had intentionally left a few grenades unharmed because others wanted to take action as well. In a surprising move, Duan Mudi jumped toward the remaining grenades and kicked one toward the black-haired man's face, causing it to explode and knocking him to the ground. Duan Mudi then prepared to kick the man's face with her boot, declaring that she wouldn't let anyone who dared to hurt her friends go unpunished. However, her kick was blocked by Lu Tony's hair, which left Duan Moody astonished since it seemed mechanically impossible for her hair to stop her attack. Duan Moody decided to retreat and observe the situation, but Lu Tony's hair caught hold of her leg and completely captured her. Lu Tony remarked that they had underestimated their opponents and began to kick Duan Moody. Xingxue rushed to protect her while you started shooting at Lu Tony from midair, with her drone also joining the attack. However, Lu Tony retaliated by using her hair to pierce Yu's stomach and drone. Despite the hair-piercing drone, the drone managed to sever the hair and fell to the ground. Lu Tony kicked you in the head, further fueling Thunder God's anger. Xingxue attempted to rush forward, but Yang stopped her, urging her to wait until the two of them understood one more thing. Perplexed, Xingxue asked what it was, and Yang responded, understand what it's called to be dependent. As you lay pinned on the floor, Thunder God and Duan Mui called out to her. Lu Tony mocked Thunder God, ridiculing his self-proclaimed title of Thor and suggesting he change his name to Snake. She then turned to his men and questioned whether they still wanted to follow their incompetent boss. Boss triggered a thought in Duan Moody's mind as she observed Yang, wondering why he hadn't made a move yet and what he was waiting for. Suddenly realizing her mistake, she shouted, I understand, boss. Save me. Lu Tony taunted her, questioning how many bosses she had. Just then, something came towards Lu Tony, but she managed to block it with her hair. Yang appeared before her, answering her earlier question by declaring himself their boss. He stated that he would kill her in a minute, making it clear that this battle would determine his absolute power. From that day forward, no one would call him Yang Fan anymore, only boss. Lu Tony scoffed at his words, claiming to have seen countless people who boasted like him. She lit her cigarette and warned him that there would be a price to pay for his arrogance in front of her. She prepared to attack him using her hair, intending to chop off his arm first. Yang responded with confidence and arrogance, allowing her to attack first. He remarked that otherwise, he feared she wouldn't last a minute against him. 
As Lu Tony launched her attacks, Yang effortlessly dodged them, showcasing his agility. Miaochuan then alerted him to a sneak attack coming from behind. Lu Tony confidently stated that no one could avoid her attack at such close range. However, to her surprise, a massive blast occurred, but Yang remained unharmed. His Tier 4 armor outfit had protected him, leaving Lu Tony pondering his origins and how he could possess such equipment. A man with purple hair informed her that Yang wasn't the only one wielding a fourth grade weapon, as ordinary people in the Scarlet Rose base were armed with second tier weapons. Lu Tony brushed it off, considering it more equipment for the Skywheel organization. She then ordered her men to unleash his true power, intending to create a bloodbath. The man with purple hair tapped her hair, infusing it with poison. Duan Moody felt the poison like a strong acid on her skin but focused on not letting the boss be distracted. On the other hand, Thunder God worried about his daughter, considering him liable, thinking Yin Yu was suffering due to him. Yang decided to jump toward Lu Tony with his sword, but his primary target was the poisoner, aiming to stop the poison from spreading further. However, he was caught off guard as Lu Tony's hair stopped him. She explained that the purple poison could corrode his armor, emphasizing that it wasn't an ordinary poison but a corrosive one. Slowly, Yang's armor began to disintegrate and break. Yang remained undeterred despite his armor being compromised, stating that it would still be the end for her at his hands. Lu Tony challenged his confidence and directed his attention to his feet, which had started to be covered in poison. In response, Yang struck his sword into the ground, questioning her. He pointed out that it required a considerable amount of energy for her to spread her hair all over the floor and turn it into her battleground. Lu Tony declared that it was too late for him to realize, boasting that she was among the top five combat powers in the Skywheel organization. And with Zhu Deli and his poison, even the boss must deal with it carefully. She claimed to possess the most powerful ability granted by their boss, further enlarging her hair. She announced that everyone should prepare to die, triggering explosions throughout the base and leaving everyone trapped with no means of escape, thinking they were about to die here. Everyone prioritized their own survival and sought to escape from Lu Tony. Ching Shua reminded them that Yang Fan, her brother, was still fighting for them and would never be defeated. Her words resonated, instilling a growing belief in Yang Fan's ability to overcome the formidable enemy. Meanwhile, Yang Fan continued his intense battle with Lu Tony. Recognizing the need to take the fight more seriously, he sheathed his sword and activated his newfound ice ability. Unleashing his attack, he froze every strand of hair with his ice magic. Lu Tony and her men stood shocked, bewildered by the sudden turn of events. She shouted in disbelief, questioning who had blocked her most powerful strike. To her surprise, a door materialized within the icy terrain, opening to reveal Yang Fan walking confidently despite his poison leg. He informed her that 10 seconds remained within the allotted minute. Lu Tony retorted, pointing out that his legs were infected with poison and claiming he couldn't defeat her in 10 minutes. Unfazed, Yang Fan responded by summoning a frost warhorse to aid his movement. Slowly and deliberately, Yang Fan approached Lu Tony. He engaged her in conversation, buying himself some time while challenging her to perform a miracle within the 10-second window. In a desperate attempt to halt his progress, Lu Tony launched an attack directly at him. However, Yang Fan managed to reach the necessary distance just in time. Seizing the opportunity, Yang Fan unleashed his ultimate move, creating an ice prison that ensnared Lu Tony within its frozen confines. She was trapped and immobilized, frozen alive by Yang Fan's decisive strike. The tide of battle had turned, favoring Yang Fan as he successfully incapacitated his formidable opponent within the icy prison. At last, they managed to capture their enemy, both Lu Tony and her accomplice, who had poisoned everyone before. Miaochuan, a level 1 healer, could tend to normal injuries but could not cure the poison due to its level 3 toxicity. The man with purple hair offered them a deal, if they healed his boss, he would detoxify everyone else. He adamantly refused to provide the antidote Yang brandished Yang his ice gun his technique, boss, pointing it at the man, them. questioning whether he was trying to threaten him. The man insisted on healing his boss first and promised to detoxify the others afterward. He turned to Lu Tony and proclaimed that he would save her, even if it cost him his life. Ching Xue swiftly intervened by pressing her knife against the man's throat. She stated that just as he wanted to save his boss, she also wanted to save hers. She threatened to harm his boss unless he cooperated, intending to cut her to pieces before his eyes if he resisted. Desperate to save his boss, the man reluctantly agreed to give the antidote to Ching Xue, pleading for her to spare his boss's life. 
Yang cut the ropes binding the man and instructed him to detoxify Thunder God, Yen Yu, and Duan Mu Yi first. Reluctantly, the man obliged, warning them that detoxification might cause discomfort. Duan Mu Yi speculated that the toxin could be a powerful weapon if studied. At the same time, Yen Yu mourned the loss of her automated drone. The man with purple hair informed Yang that it was now his turn to have the poison removed. He firmly grasped Yang's legs, wearing a sinister expression, and demanded that they heal his boss before detoxifying Yang. Thunder God and Xing Xue attempted to intervene, but Yang stopped them, instructing them to stay away while he engaged the man with purple hair. Yang provocatively asked if the man had a crush on his boss, leaving everyone shocked and causing the man's face to flush red. Yang explained that the man's deep care for his boss went beyond mere superiority and subordination, making his words denying any romantic involvement seem unbelievable, further embarrassing the man. Yang urged Miao Chuan to treat Lu Tony first, promising they would be allowed to leave if the man detoxified him and answered a few more questions. The man agreed, stating that he would tell Yang everything he wanted to know and detoxify Yang's legs. Slowly, Lu Tony regained consciousness, and upon seeing Yang being detoxified, she ordered the man with purple hair to stop the process. The man reminded her that it was part of their deal, but she erupted in anger, declaring that he did not need to help her. She belittled the Scarlet Rose base as a second-rate establishment focused on raising zombies. Her words shocked Yen Yu and infuriated Thunder God. Lu Tony even mocked Thunder God, referring to him as a worthless man unable to accept the reality of his wife's death, which deeply affected Yen Yu. Lu Tony proclaimed her intent to kill everyone present and launched another attack using her hair. The purple-haired man tried to stop her, reasoning that they would all die if she proceeded. Amid the imminent attack, you asked her father about her mother's mention by Lu Tony. Thunder God closed his eyes, acknowledging the futility of his role as a father. Just as the attack was about to strike Thunder God, who had resigned himself to his impending death, Yang swiftly impaled Lu Tony's heart with an ice magic attack. Now on her knees, blood seeping from her chest, Lu Tony insisted that Yang would only hinder her boss and must die. The purple-haired man shielded Yang, informing Lu Tony that the Skywill organization didn't consider them significant and only intended to exploit them. He urged her to think for herself. Lu Tony ordered him to leave, threatening to kill him as well. She revealed that she knew the man's affection for her, but she despised being surrounded by a licking dog. She confessed her love for her boss, Zhuo Lingyun, the leader of the Skywheel organization. She declared that she was willing to do anything for him. Tears welled in the man's eyes, but he couldn't bear to see her die before him, even if he died. Yang, gripping her hair, retorted that the man wasn't a licking dog but that she was a bitch. He unleashed a barrage of ice attacks on her, ultimately ending her life. The purple-haired man held Lu Tony in his arms, attempting to speak with her. Yang asked him why the Skywheel organization aimed to integrate all the bases in Sichuan City. Yang promised to allow them to collect Lu Tony's body and leave if he revealed the information. The man disclosed the existence of a random trader in the center of the first ring, which has a powerful challenge field offering special and rich rewards. However, the Skywheel organization needed help to complete the challenge with its current base. It required a significant number of cannon fodder, which was the purpose behind integrating all the bases. Cannon fodder refers to soldiers considered expendable in war. Yang requested Miao Chuan heal him, but the man adamantly refused, asking him to be buried alongside his boss after poisoning himself. This revelation shocked Yang and everyone present. Amid the apocalypse, such pure feelings still existed. Yang instructed his teammates to bury them together. Meanwhile, Thunder God, Yin Yu, and their companions entered a dark hallway and reached an iron door. Yu's father informed her that her mother was behind the door and asked if she wanted to see her. Yu replied that regardless of her current state, she was still her mother. The door creaked open, revealing a zombie chained within, growling and ready to attack them. What lies ahead for them as they venture into this mystical world? What do you think will happen next? Don't forget to hit the like button, comment if you want to continue this series and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching.